All right, so we're moving on. We we spend uh, three nights here at Turistico number one, Turistico numero uno. And since you can't drink the well water or the ground water in Mexico, and we've heard mixed reviews, not necessarily because it's polluted, because it's very minerally. So we have to find water purification stations that have hoses to be able to fill RVs. So not all water purification stands have hoses. Do they take cards? No, cash, 100. Really? That's yeah, not that's bad. It. Okay. And can accommodate RVs, so you have to do your research and find ones that do. And this one, really close to our campsite, happens to be one of those. So in the really high winds the other day, my flexible solar panel got blown around and my SAE, my plug and play for my solar, extra solar panels on the side of my rig broke, the pin pulled off. So there's an auto zone in town. I'm going to see if they might have one of these uh, and I can just wire it into the MC4s, but I just need an SAE connector. So we're going to go into auto zone, see if they have one. So just this, this SAE. Maybe this. All right. The, the gauge isn't quite as high as I need, but uh, gauge is the thickness of the wire and how much power can go through it. But we'll see if it works. Looks like it'll work. Oh yeah. <laughs> Look at that. All right, so now I'm just going to need to have to uh, uh, splice it together with the MC4, or actually just I have extra MC4s. I've never had any luck attaching MC4s, but maybe with the help of some friends I can get it done. But all right, back in business with my solar panels. saw some cute blouses on the side of the road some cute things yeah so look it oh where's the one I saw oh that's kind of cute oh where did it go oh right here look it Oh, and it's cotton. Oh, it's oh, it's really thick. That's cute, though. <laughs> well, bummer. It looks like they don't have half the stuff that's hanging up, or the only one they have is what's hanging up. Okay, that well, was worth a stop. All right, we're gonna go to the uh, bodega next. And I know you're already asking if I'm alone. Yes, I am alone today. We've been here five days. We all felt totally safe and comfortable going out and running errands on our own today before we move on. So we're meeting in a couple hours at a uh, tourist place, Giant uh, Sororos, and we all just kind of wanted to hang out in town and do our thing today, independent of one another. Feel totally safe. Driving's not that bad. It's great. 
bodegas or mercados in Mexico have everything from tomatoes to tires. We have found even the big grocery stores like Lay's, which is kind of like Albertsons, literally has everything. So I went into this bodega feeling a little overwhelmed <laughs> TVs and appliances and everything. And I was mostly just looking for produce, which I don't think they had. So didn't buy anything and uh, left pretty quickly. A little bit of everything, televisions, batteries but nothing I needed and yes in Mexico at least in San Felipe you need to bring your own bags <laughs> we all made that mistake in the grocery store yesterday oh my gosh agua and air huh. probably not to drink they pump your gas for you in Mexico and it's a good idea to get out and make sure they zero out the pump so they're not charging you more. Some people say that's been an issue. It hasn't been an issue for me so far. So I just spent $124 for less than a half a tank of gas. <laughs> yeah, that's um, 25, less than 20, fewer than 25 gallons. $124. I need to, when I stop up here soon, I'm going to do the math and check the receipt. I guess that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, if I'm paying like $450, $475 a gallon, I just did not expect that. 2200 pesos. And I just did the math. Divided by 17. The exchange rate is 17 to 1 now. 17 pesos. 17.05 to the dollar. So, wow, gas is no joke. No joke. I guess it's Joe Biden's fault. So, 98 and a half liters at $22.99 a liter. So, there are uh, 3.8 liters per gallon. So, 25. It sounds a little bit high. I guess, well, you know, the top half of the tank is bigger than the bottom half. You know, it always takes a lot longer to go from full to half than from half to empty. So, that's what I, that sounds right. Wow, gas is expensive here. But I was prepared for that. So I'm waiting for my friends. We're going to the big giant Sororos. Got by my dog. So we're at the uh, Valley de Gigantes, the Valley of the Giants, which is a half hour south of San Felipe. Giant Sororos. It was 200 pesos to get in each car. It's been a cluster buck. Anyway, uh, which is about $12 per car. We could have carpooled. We were going to carpool, and then things just got complicated. <laughs> so, you go through the pain zones quick down here. Somebody started digging as soon as we got here. Almost heat stroked herself out. <laughs> Are you okay? Did you get a drink? There seems to be a little debate about what species of cacti these actually are. According to the site's literature and website, they call them Sororo species. But if you look at the state tourism website, they actually call them Cardones, which are also called elephant cactus. Giant Sororos. I've never seen anything like this, I don't think, in uh, Arizona, but I've never been to the Sororo National Park. So I think there might be some like this there. 
Mexican giant cardone or elephant cactus is a species of a large cactus native to northwestern Mexico and Baja. <laughs> you see how big that is? Wow, look at that. Pretty big. It's commonly referred to as cardone. So which is it? After doing some research, making this video, after visiting the location, I'm convinced they are cardone, elephant cactus, and not sororo. Whatever the species, they are certainly a sight to see. The largest of the species here are the tallest in the world, topping out at 15 meters, which is 49 feet. Wow. Can't see much from the road. This is the furthest south I've ever been in Baja. So everything from here on out is brand new territory for me. You might remember that I mentioned before in 95, 94. I was at Berkeley. Yeah, I was at Berkeley. So it was probably like 94. I did a uh, spring break road trip with the guy I was seeing at the time, and uh, we made it down to Puerto Cintos. Oh yeah, look at this. And the boondocking spot we spouted is a spot scout. I'm very tired. I've been doing a lot of peopling. I think I might need a night to myself, but anyway, uh, just need to recharge my batteries. Um, Wow, it's beautiful. The, the spot we scouted isn't too far away from here, just south of Puerto Cintos. My friends Sarah and Aaron from that RV over there are already there. Sarah had to work today, so they're a little ahead of us. Uh, they ran errands this morning and just headed straight to camp instead of going to the Sororos. Because, trabajo. I'll put a link to Sarah and Aaron's channel in the description below. So, uh, in case you're just tuning in to this video and haven't heard that they're my friends that were uh, part of the group of the this trip to Baja and they're a couple younger 40 travel in a class C RV with their cat Pam. Pam is quite a hair so go ahead and check out their channel because they're also recording so it'll be kind of fun to see both our footage I think. So check them out. So, no. So, we're following you. We might have a little cove all to ourselves. I... Yeah, yeah. Okay. It, once you go down, you have to go around where the road is washed out. Yeah, right I see here. that. Yeah. And then, um, they uh, this van actually just took the spot that I was hoping we would. Oh, but, bummer. But, yeah, down there is really nice, and uh, there's spots. Okay, cool. Plenty of room. Awesome. It didn't look like it was on the beach. Well, it's close to the beach. Okay. Yeah. We'll have plenty of beach camping. Yeah, the beach is very sandy too, so you don't want to get on the beach proper. Are you on the edge of the sand, I'm guessing?
ever there on any of these turnouts, I would take them. This spot is okay, but uh, there's a bit of glass, and there's probably only one level area. Although there is a cement pad here, but there's glass on it. Tonight, quick dinner. So I had had this pum fu in the refrigerator for a while. So this is a uh, pum fu. It's like uh, what's it called? Tempeh made out of pumpkin seeds. It's really good. And some broccoli. And what else did I put in there? Onions, red bell pepper, and some kimchi that I've had in the refrigerator forever. Kimchi is a really great hack for cooking. It's pickled. It's pickled cabbage. I think it's Korean, usually. Korean or Chinese? I can't remember. Um, it's pickled cabbage and it's got a lot of really good flavor, so I threw that in there and I'm gonna make some buckwheat noodles and I'm, that's gonna be my dinner tonight, really easy. Looks delicious, doesn't it? Mm. Oh, actually it's soybean pasta. High protein, bought it on sale somewhere. It's actually not that great, but I wanna use it up and it's high protein. it's a windy nasty day outside really windy and nasty we were out there for a little while but uh not a good day to be out so also not a good day for my solar and my battery so it's days like today i'm really relying on my blue eddy ac 200l and i was just reading this morning that hurricane season is only a hundred days away anybody who lives in hurricane territory knows that that means power outages weather is getting more crazy and power grids are failing. I just heard something on the news the other day about a satellite. Russia is putting a nuclear satellite that's going to be able to wipe out our entire grid. I mean, things feel are feeling a little bit crazy right now. So a backup power source, especially if you need to run any uh, medical devices, a backup power source, I think everybody has to have one. Every house should have one. And Blue Eddy has been my backup battery of choice for a couple reasons. 
It's got a life PO4 battery. You're going to get 3,000 charge cycles, which is about a 10-year battery life and a pure sine wave inverter to run 99% of your electronics. So I love having the AC200L in my RV life for a couple reasons. Number one, it charges super fast. I have the Bluetti 450 watt solar panel, so I can just put, out, put it out in the sun and it can charge in a few hours. Or if I am plugged into an RV park, it'll go from zero to 80 in 45 minutes or full charge in just a couple hours. So it's super fast, so that's really convenient. I love that it's a lot of power, 2,400 watts of power. <laughs> It's super compact. I can just store it right here under my bench. And don't worry, if you need more power for your house in an emergency situation, the AC200L is expandable. That's right, it's scalable. So you can add a B300, a B210, or a B230, and you can get as much as 8,700 watt hours. So with 8,700 watt hours of power, you're going to be able to charge your life in almost any situation you're going to be able to keep things running and because you can just put it out with a couple solar panels in the sun you're not going to have to worry about power in an emergency the other thing i really like about the ac 200 l is this check it out it's got a 30 amp plug i can plug my entire rv into the ac 200 l also i can charge uh, up to 10 different devices while i'm recharging the bluetti so if it's outside charging in the sun and this is also going to be really helpful in an emergency emergency situation you don't have to wait until it's fully charged to start charging your devices so whether you're looking for a backup power source in this ever-changing volatile world for your sticks and bricks life or you want a power source for your RV or van life or to take camping with you, the uh, Blue Eddy AC200L or any one of their products is going to be a really good choice for you. Get started powering your life today by checking out the link in the video description below and find the Blue Eddy that's right for you. Thank you Blue Eddy for sponsoring this video. Let's go make some pancakes. <laughs>
underwear, t-shirts, a little bit of everything. Our next stop is the cow patty, which is the local watering hole. I had to talk my friends into going inside. We were really glad we did. Gotta say hi to Teddy. Awesome guy from Dublin. Fun time. Camp. Camp's over there by that building. Baja, California and Baja Sur get hit pretty hard with hurricanes during hurricane season. In 2023, it was Hurricane Hillary. And in 2011, I think that was the last really big one, it was Irene. And there are remnants all along the coast of towns and houses and communities that were completely destroyed by hurricane damage. And it looks like that's what we're camped on because there are foundations and things like that. So you'll see that quite a bit along the coast. Thank you. 
<laughs> Look at them all. <laughs> There's a whole bunch. Decided we want to check out a small town that's kind of off the beaten track, a little bit out of the way, called Bahia de Los Angeles. It is on Highway 12 East from uh, Highway 1. I don't know where the turnoff is, but it looks like a really small, kind of quiet community, and we're all looking forward to it and hopefully some gorgeous beach camping.
the Bahia de los Angeles. Bahia de los Angeles. Something like that. <gasps> wow. Ooh, there's a cafe. Oh my gosh, there's public transportation. Sport fishing. thing that we have noticed is you cannot rely on the gas stations on iOverlander. That one didn't look open. We ran into one in Puerto Citos that wasn't open. And uh, I don't remember it saying that in the reviews. Actually, I should leave a review so that people know they're not open. So in yeah. 400 meters at the roundabout, continue straight. Here's a Pemex. There's one here. Pemex. They look open. Uh, so what they say when you're coming down here is fill up every chance you get, which is pretty much what we've been doing. Stop signs at roundabouts, <laughs> which is odd. scouted a couple markets here in Bahia de los Angeles and I'm going to La Isla. I'm in search of produce. It's really hard to find good fresh produce in Mexico and uh, little store has pretty much what all the little stores have a little bit of produce so I picked up some broccoli that's about it. According to iOverlander, there's some boondocking out here on the edge of town. So we're heading down there now to see what it looks like. Beach side looks amazing. Cabbage and cilantro are also really plentiful in every little town and every little shop in Mexico. So I'm just going to make a quick taco with a little slaw that I mix together with cilantro and cabbage and a little lime juice and some leftover tofu. I just heat it up and some cauliflower. And that's going to be dinner. It'll be delicious. Both for every meal. Very good. Mm -mm -mm. All right, let's go explore.
so nobody's been begging you? So you've been good? You've been really good. And we started chatting like we've been coming here for years. Interesting. He asked if anybody was bugging us? Yeah, in terms of, you know, private property, get out type. <sighs> so uh, we're heading to dinner. So in case I haven't told you, we're in Bahia de Los Angeles. And uh, dinner... A restaurant is like half a mile from where we're camped. A walk on the beach to dinner. So that's cool. And it's like the best place in town. Has the best reviews. My, I think, scouted it out. It'll be good. Edie is walking with us. Sarah had more work to do. So they're going to join us in a little bit by car. There it is. Amazing. They've got ceviche. They have all kinds of stuff. And good news, the vegan police gave me permission to have some fish while I was here. But only a couple times a year. Because I have to apparently, like, I don't know. I'm not allowed to be my own person. So, thank you, vegan police. What do you think? This might be the best thing ever tasted. What is it? It's got like black Oh, so what is theirs? <laughs> no, not off the table. So we're just going to tease her. She's so confused. <laughs> Hey friendlies, before I show you the surprise that we found on our way back to camp that night, really like a huge surprise, once in a lifetime opportunity, I think that we got to see this and it was amazing. But before we get to that, do me a favor and if you're enjoying my videos, subscribe to my channel and even if you think you're subscribed, go ahead and double check because YouTube does unsubscribe people. And I have a couple things that I saved for patrons, including a stop at a wonderful cafe in Bahia de los angeles <laughs> it was an adorable little cafe we had some great food and i'm going to share that and some other bonus content with patrons so go ahead and join patreon using the link in the video description below and you can now join patreon for free and i am sharing some free bonus content as well thank you all so much for being here let wait till you see this just wait till you see this it was the coolest thing i don't think i'm going to be able to get it oh yep there it is
After dinner on our walk back to camp, we were treated with this extremely rare and remarkable sight. The waves were bioluminescent, which were caused by the red tide that we saw coming in earlier. The bioluminescence in the water is caused from an algae bloom of plankton. Sometimes it can be toxic, sometimes not so much. We read that it was toxic, but then we've heard of people who actually swim in it. It's a really, really cool effect. It leaves trails if boats drive through it, oh if you God. throw rocks in it, oh which we did later, but I wasn't able to get on film. And when fish jump, and I was trying to get some of the fish jumping because everything kind of lights up and glows. They say that when a boat travels on it, the wake of the boat will sparkle and glow like this. Can you imagine? We were hoping we would see one, but we didn't. And I wasn't taking any chances with the red tide earlier uh, when it first started coming in, when it showed red, or even tonight. So I was really doing my best to keep Sadie out of it. If you look really carefully in the background, you might be able to see some fish jumping and how they sparkle and shine when they jump out of the water and splash back in. It was amazing. Oh, I missed it. You missed it. I can't see because everything is black, so I can't tell where I'm, if I'm pointing up or down. There we go. I see it now. Oh my god, that is so cool. 